I'm going to talk today <coughs> about an idea that I have as a platform for green design. And the same way that Google is a platform for information and images and so forth. This is an idea that I have for green design, where I see green design as the integration of four equal infrastructures. These are the key components that I consider to be what green design is about. First of all, engineering, because of our standard living, you've got to have engineering. Second has to do with water, because water is what life is about. And second is about nature, because nature has utilities, which you cannot see. You can't see photosynthesis happening, you cannot see biodiversity, you cannot see succession, but it is there. And find us, us, like human beings, because our lives also have to change. We cannot live the same way as we have been doing for the last 100, 200 years. So if you elaborate on, on these four basic aspects, so it's engineering, water, green, our lifestyles, this is what it's about. So I started to color code them. I called um, engineering gray, I called water blue, um, nature's infrastructure is green, and lifestyle's red because that's the color of blood. Our engineering systems have to be clean technology, have to be low carbon neutral, low carbon and carbon neutral. Water management, we have to close the cycle as much as we can. We have to harvest rainwater, we have to reuse um, water, we have to use gray, reuse grey water and reuse and recycle black water. Um, the green infrastructure we have to bring back into the natural into our built environment because if you take the room that we are in right now, everything in this room is inorganic except you and me and the bugs. And so, green design, you could start with any of these eco infrastructures uh, uh, as a starting point. I'm just going to show you a project that where we start with the green eco infrastructure as the starting point for design. Now, whenever we look at a site for the first time, we look at its latitude, we find out where it is, and look at its level of biodiversity. This is a diagram that shows that level of biodiversity is more intensive at the tropical areas, and as you head upwards, it gets less and less biodiverse. And so this is the different regions of the Earth, has different ecology, and so these are the two factors to look at and we start designing. Now, here's a project we look at in India. The site is right next to a forest reserve. And the first thing we did was to create a spine between our development and the forest reserve to collect all the species, and we stretch it across the site. This is the master plan for this project, and so we create the spine, we collect the species, and we stretch it across the site. And so this is the green infrastructure for this project. Now on this, on top of this, we lay the other infrastructures, the red, which is the, uh, the blue, which is the water system. We try and harvest rainwater, we try to close to the loop, we try to recycle gray water, we try to recycle black water. And one way to do this is to use um, constructed wetlands so that this is a natural way of treating black water, so that black water gets treated from pond to pond. By the time you reach the last pond, it's almost potable. And then, um, top is engineering. This is the different systems we have for energy, for IT, um, for, uh, and, 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 and so forth. Now, the biggest problem is that there will always be a crisscrossing. But in nature, we have to make things connected. We cannot have the green infrastructure being bifurcated by, by roads and by drains. So how do we do this in the infrastructure? One of the things we try to develop is what we call the eco-bridge. Now, if you have two sites A and B, which is cut by this nasty little highway in between, well, our idea is that what happens if you bridge across the highway, you vegetate the highway, and then all of a sudden you have what used to be two disparate pieces of land that becomes one single habitat uh, with a greater sharing of resources, which leads to a greater level of biodiversity and a greater level of um, sustainability for the future. And so here's an example of what an eco-bridge looks like. And so whenever you have a road cutting through a wild area or a rural area, we try and sort of vegetate it, bring it across, so the species can move from one part of the land to the other part of the land. So that's the idea of what we call integrating the four eco-infrastructures into a single whole. Now, how do you apply this to a building? And so here's an idea of a, that we a designed a building that we did in, in Gurgaon in New Delhi. And one of the things we did was to bring the eco-infrastructure all the way up from the front of the building right to the top of the building, goes across the top of the building down to the other side. And so that's the master plan for the site. That's the ground floor. And we have two ramps. One ramp, you know, ring the vegetation both from the front of the building and to the back of the building, weaves this up to the top, connects at the top. And then uh, here's where it looks like and goes down to the back of the building. And so the idea of this connected, bringing ecological nexus from one part of the site to the other part of the site up to the building intrigued us. 
And so we came up with this idea that why don't we just have a ramp on the outside of the building with vegetation so it becomes a linear park, the building as a linear park. And so this is the scheme that we designed in Singapore where the idea was to have a linear park that weaves its way up on, on the facade of the building, going up to the top of the building. And we started to draw images of what it looks like so you can see a walkway into the side of, uh, between the, the, the vegetation of the building. Eventually we got this built and this is what it looks like. You see the vegetation, that's the walkway and that's the building. And here's another view of the linear park. That's the entire building itself. You can see the park going up the size of the building. But we need to bring it down to the ground as well. Bring it down to the basement and create what we call eco cells. And so finally, as human beings, we have to change our diet, we have to change the way we move. And so this is an idea that we had where we look at different types of cities where we said, look, you know, you can have a motor car city, you can have a walking city, a bicycle city. One of the ideas that we have is to have something in between so that every part of the city for each community is within a seven minute walking distance. So this discourages the use of private cars, reduces the energy consumption, and so the people who get to schools, get to a playground, get to uh, facilities uh, without using the private cars. So the seven minute communities is another idea that we have where you start to plan a city as a series of, uh, of little clusters of seven minutes. So here it is, the platform for green design of four big four infrastructures, the gray, the blue, the green, and finally the red, us as human beings.